Hi there, I am the CRM Ninja, and on today's episode of The Oops Factor, I'm delighted to have Damien Bird. Welcome to the show, Damien. Hi, how are you? Hi, thanks for having me along. It's great to have you. I mean, we've been chatting for so long in uh, digital medium, and now obviously faced, uh, admittedly not quite face to face, but at least yeah. actually able to see each other when we're talking. Yeah, it's a, it's it's crazy, isn't it? Because uh, there's so many folk in the community, to be honest, that I've uh, spoken with, but never met in person, albeit I've met a good chunk of folk at Scottish Summit and, and South Coast Summit, to be honest. So some yep. familiar pieces. I think South Kasama is actually where I saw you first in person. I'm like, wow, this guy is tall. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the first event I'd ever been to. Um, and, uh, well, I don't know, chuck the kilt on for, for laugh, something different, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's It's been done before. So, yeah, yeah. why not? Oh, that's good. <laughs> so something that I wanted to ask you about was, I understand that you have on and off over the years played around not played is probably the wrong word but dabbled a bit in gardening more specifically <laughs> fruit vegetables that garden which is why i'm my face is surrounded by um some neatly ordered stuff so how long have you been doing it for and how or why did you start it well when i bought my first house actually in 2003 so it is about 19 years ago wow. the house had a greenhouse um, and so I thought, you know, I'll give this a go and uh, try growing some veg. And about uh, the first year in, the, the greenhouse got smashed up by uh, lo local youths. And, oh, uh, no. Yeah, but we actually got we got a new one. We got, went from a really old greenhouse to a nice fancy new one. And it's actually followed me to two more houses since. So I still have it outside in the garden where I live now. A new, a new greenhouse, not new local yes. youths. Not my, not local. <laughs> no, no, there's no youths here. I don't know where so, they are. But, something could uh, have happened to the old ones, possibly for yeah, smashing. <laughs> grown up, grown up, moved on. Probably more things to do. Um, but the greenhouse has followed me, and uh, I had a little veg plot in the old house, and quite enjoyed growing veg with the, with the kids. And it's the sort of thing that's yeah, I, I've just kept going. I'm not. It doesn't look as professional as the photo you've got in the background there, um, especially in Scotland. You don't have enough sun, although the sun <laughs> the sun has appeared tonight, um, but it's been raining all day. But yeah, I've got I've got a polytunnel now as well, and I'm growing onions and uh, courgettes, and we've had broccoli tonight from the from the polytunnel. So oh, yeah, nice. a lot of selection. That's that's really nice. So how big is the greenhouse? Um, well, the the greenhouse is. Eight foot by six foot. And I should okay. say that whilst it's made it here and the high winds at the beginning of this year, it got smashed to pieces, like well, well and truly. It, it, it's got this uh, fancy glass in it, uh, like the car uh, glass. So it just goes into tiny little beads when it, when it smashes. Uh, um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, um, those panes of glass pretty much roll down the, down the garden, the high winds in February. And uh, there are just lots of beads of glass everywhere still. So uh, it's it's never been fixed. Um, but the polytunnel is 24 foot by 14 foot. I think it's quite, <laughs> it's quite big. <laughs> yeah. My um, wife had better not listen to this because she's been begging me for more vegetable stuff. And yeah. I'm like, I like a bit of grass to walk on. Um, a a polytunnel uh is amazing because the temperature in it gets up to 40 odd degrees i mean it is it does peak and trough quite a lot because the temperature does drop whereas i suppose a greenhouse will maybe retain its heat a bit more but uh the the poly is just a nice place to go and hang out to be honest it's just no wind and uh nice and cozy yeah that sounds that sounds quite interesting so have you tried any exotic sort of vegetables over time with it or or just sort of the basic as my well, my grandmother always used to call it rabbit style food, you know, like yeah. cucumbers and tomatoes and that yeah. sort of stuff. Definitely do those style. I've done uh, pumpkins. That's quite uh, exotic for Scotland, I think, maybe. Um, <laughs> and we've actually carved our pumpkins in previous years. I've actually, you know, they got to a decent size. How big do um, they get? Um, well, like, like that size. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> head and a bit wider size. Yeah, um, they were a good good size, um, but the season in uh, Scotland's not great. So mixed results. I've not had that for a while. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else. Sweet corn maybe is that exotic? I've tried it. It worked. Um, I don't know. Does it, it? It doesn't grow natively in Scotland, as far as I'm aware. Not not in a hurry. No. no. <laughs> I, I can't remember going to the supermarket and saying Scottish sweet corn. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes good, but yeah, uh, it's, yes. good. it's just uh, something different, a bit, a bit of fun, really. I'm not, like I say, my garden doesn't look anything like that background image you've got there, um, but I like to give it a go. It's good, and it can be quite cathartic at times as well. Yeah, definitely, it's good escape. It's uh, you know when my plants are drying out and. Uh, I'm busy at my desk. I need to go out there and tend to my vegetables. So uh, it gets me away from my desk. That is that is very, very good thing. So going from, from the joys of gardening to the oops factor, what do you have to share? Well, my my, my, my crazy oops is my, is my health. Um, you know, okay. I went from being super fit and totally into exercise and, uh, and cycling and running and cricket and squash and football, all sorts of sports I've played over the years, um, to then discovering I had a rare heart disease. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a surprise. Uh, to how did how did it. you find that out? I mean, I know that you've been, as you say, very active in a variety of sports. So was this something that just suddenly happened overnight or? Well, I had, uh, it, was, it was about six months before we had our lockdown back in April 2020, was it? And uh, so it would have been about October 2019. And I'd taken part in a cross-country race, actually a, a 5K race. I came third. I got a medal. I was well, well. Congratulations. Um, but I started feeling dizzy during the run. And so I'd gone to the GP to get myself checked out and they'd referred me to cardiology and they stick you on a treadmill at top, top speed, 15 minutes. They start, start you off nice and gradual, increase the gradient increase the speed and the effort required and I got through that no bother um I'd been checked for other things as well and was diagnosed celiac and then I was okay. waiting I was, I was waiting for a device to uh, as a halter monitor so they can monitor me for 24 hours I'd gone out for a cycle one day uh in the evening and I woke up on the uh, road <laughs> so I'd been out by myself and uh yeah crashed my bike face plant straight into the road so you 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 had sort of passed out while cycling yeah just totally i just fell unconscious uh so i don't remember any but i just remember waking up and uh i laugh about it because it's my way of coping uh, to be honest because uh sort of after the whole diagnosis i was pretty pretty morose and uh pretty depressed to be honest but uh i can yeah. imagine I've just got to get on with it, unfortunately. Oh. But I'm here. That's the, that's, the, that's the main thing. That's the crazy thing about uh, what's happened to me is that they say only one in 10 survive a sudden cardiac arrest. So, yeah, I was I was lucky. So essentially, when you passed out, you had had a cardiac arrest then? Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a suspicion. Um, it's um, a certain arrhythmia called a VT, um, which is when my bottom... Uh, bottom chambers of my heart will pick up pace so the top could be going at normal pace at 60 and the bottom just goes erratic and because there's no uh, sort of synchronization going on there's no blood flow and you pass out um, and if it keeps right. going it's game over yeah so I get zapped as I discovered in December last year um, if if I go into VT again I get uh, a shock from my ICD. Um, okay, for for those for those who aren't medically minded, <laughs> by ICD you're talking about essentially a pacemaker. Yeah, so it's uh, it's like the next version of a pacemaker. So it's uh, you, you've seen the defibrillator in, in shops and stuff. You the yep. little orange packs or green packs on the walls. Well, I've got one of them actually under my skin, wired into my heart, and uh, it, it's configurable so it can be used to pace and it's been installed as if it could pace so it's got two wires in there 
but at the moment it's uh, set up just to monitor for that particular arrhythmia um, where the bottom uh, chambers go scatty and uh, it will charge and it will zap me like a defibrillator yeah i have I have maybe a really strange question here, and yeah. please, please excuse me. Uh, um, as you said last year at Habit, you, what does it actually feel like when it well, happens? Is, yeah, can well, you describe it? I can't because I don't remember. <laughs> okay, um, I had been feeling unwell for about three months uh, prior to this happening. Um, and I've still got symptoms of um, the problem that I'm uh, encountering. It's okay. The ICD, as I said, has got two leads inside one of my key veins that goes into my heart. And that vein, as a result of having the leads going through it, is being restricted. So I've got a problem with blood flow at the moment. The top half of my body uh, doesn't drain. And so the veins on my neck will swell up if I'm doing anything strenuous. <laughs> Um, and my face will even go red. The kids will notice it if I'm doing uh, like hoovering or something like that. So I've got an excuse not to hoover. Um, but that particular day, I'd been in hospital two days earlier and I'd been told there's nothing wrong. And then I'd been out to feed my chickens out in the garden to... Uh, oh, oh to hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you, not only do you do vegetables, you also have chickens. Yeah, yeah. I've got about... 12, 11 or 12 chickens, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, some cool little orange ones that uh, they're the main egg producers, some hybrid high line. Mm, nice. Flips. And then I've got silkies that we uh, hatched ourselves from eggs that we bought off of eBay and just stuck into. Uh... Sorry, I, I just wouldn't think to go on eBay to buy chicken eggs, but I guess. Yeah, well, it's, it's a big market, actually. It's crazy. You can just pick and choose the type of chicken you want. And uh, in the post next day, you know, you've got some eggs. They've hopefully um, been impregnated and uh, you're ready to go and stick them in the incubator and uh, see what happens in three weeks' time. Wow. Cool. <laughs> So you've been out feeding the chickens and you hadn't been feeling well for them and you've been in hospital. Okay. Yeah, and I was just bending over, topping up their feed. Neck was going, you know, swelling up. And uh, next minute, I just remember sort of coming round. But it's actually one of my uh, Twitter posts from, I think it's about the is it 12th of December last year. Um, I caught it on CCTV. Um, so you could see me being shocked. Literally, my arms like jump up, um, and then I, I need to go take a look at that. I do not recall yeah. watching that video. Sorry if that's a bit more rose, but no. Well, it's 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 um, they actually the, the local hospital want to use it as a training video because it's not often you catch people on video being shocked by their ICDs. Um, but I didn't know at the time, and it just so happened my wife was at home. Normally, she's not. And so I uh, told her the story. I went and called the hospital and said, look, any chance you can check my ICD? Because it's all cloud-based. It synchronizes. I've got a little home hub where all my data nice. gets synced back and they can check. And uh, they said, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a call to have a quick look. Didn't get a call. So I thought, right, that's it. I'm fine. Nothing's happened. But three hours later, I got a call to say, oh, you've had a cardiac arrest. <laughs> it's like, so that's an immediate ban from driving for six months. Um, I can so. imagine. So as you said, this is something rare. It's, I believe you said it was genetic. Or... Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy one because it's, it's thought to be genetic. They've got, um, there are known genes that they can uh, detect or known gene mutations that they can detect. Okay. Unfortunately, I've not got those mutations, but I have got the common symptoms and telltale signs of this heart disease, which is, you get fatty tissue on the walls of your heart. Okay. Your heart stretches as a result of that. And because you've got that fatty tissue, you get ectopics and then this irregular rhythm. Um, uh. But there's some exciting news in that uh, the British Heart Foundation just this week have announced that they're, they've, they've picked a partner um, to look at solving 
this specific disease. Um, ah. So we've been given a massive amount of funding for the next five years to potentially find the, the, the genes responsible for it and block them. Um, so who knows, maybe not fix me, but they might fix the kids uh, you know, in years to come. Um, yeah. But we'll see. So obviously, you know, this isn't something you would ever have expected. This isn't something that happened really uh, from talking yeah. as you know part of your lifestyle. So having, how do you sort of, I guess, go about your day-to-day, week-to-week basis, knowing that this could happen out the blue anytime, and you would have no recollection of it? Because for me, I think that would be sort of hanging over my head, the back of my mind. Oh, no, maybe I won't do something because it could happen at any point, and I'll be very cautious. How do you go through life? Um, I think that's kind of what happened to me the first three months is that I thought, you know, this is the end. Uh, <laughs> um, I did feel sorry for myself quite a fair bit, to be honest. Um, why has it happened to me? Uh, what a big part of my life was cycling. Every weekend, I would be out on my bike or yeah. I would even commute to work, which was sort of 12 miles each way. And I absolutely loved getting out on my bike. Um, I cycled coast to coast of Scotland as well, just nice. in, 20, in 2019. So, you know, I'd... I was doing that level of cycling, doing about three, 4,000 miles a year. Um, and to suddenly have it taken away from you, I was well and truly gutted. Um, it has been quite hard, and it still is quite hard at times, because like um, my kids are into park runs. My wife, I got her into running, and I can't I can't do any running now, so it's, it's game over. But the whole being scared of being shocked thing, I just don't think about it at the moment. I'm sure there'll be times when I do, but I've just got to get on with it. <laughs> True. No, it's it's important. And I can think of, you know, obviously you have a condition of the people who have, you know, depression at times or other stuff or, or known, yeah. you know, could have depressive episodes and know about that. Again, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, you know, that wider picture as to how people would maybe be able to go through life with handling something like that. Yeah, well, I think that's kind of one of the reasons i got into the whole microsoft uh, power platform the support forum and stuff like that you know just the community forums because it just gave me an outlet a focus um a distraction from everything that was going on um and it 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 sort of took over from my cycling i guess because um it gave me a a new area to to focus on and get involved with uh, and something i've really enjoyed um and indeed, focus you have, you have over, I think it was over 500 recognized solutions. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because when you, when you start off, you, you think, oh, this isn't for me. I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to, to help out here. And then you get your first answer and then you think, oh, maybe I could get to 10 uh, and then 20. And, and the whole badge thing, the kudos and, and all that, the, yeah. it, it, it does start, uh, sort of spur you on. And, uh, you keep going and then before you know it you've got 100 and then you think right i could get to 250 getting to 500 was just oh it was a struggle because it's it's a big jump yeah but i'm glad i got to that point um and the whole youtube thing as well has been yeah a journey i didn't expect um but really enjoyed um the engagement i get brilliant brilliant well Damien, thank you so much for coming on the show and and sharing your life experiences Cool. Yeah, thanks very much for having me along, and uh, I'll aim to work on my garden so it looks a bit like that. (laughs) I look forward to seeing pictures of it. (laughs) Viewers, we hope that you've learned a lot from the episode. Feel free to check out the rest of the Ooze Factor playlist, subscribe to the channel, take a look at the blog, and if you would like to come on the show yourself, hit the link somewhere in the description below, put in your details, and I'd love to have you on. But above all, have an amazing day.